exactly should we blame capitalism for about this epidemic? Um, uh, and the third is uh, part of the um, context, which I did talk about to some extent in the article, but I'm going to talk about a little bit more, uh, which is uh, the problem, the extent to which we're living uh, in a uh, process of policy making, which is almost entirely dominated by news management, but also has a marked uh, shock doctrine, Naomi Klein's shock doctrine, uh, or don't waste, don't let a good crime manual, don't let a good crisis go to waste uh, aspect to it. Uh, so back to run through the points. Um, this is not the final crisis of capitalism. The problem essentially is this, in order for it to be the final, a terminal crisis of capitalism, there needs to be some alternative system of economic management practically available and thinkable and imaginable as a better alternative. Uh, the mere fact that uh, the, the state has uh, engaged in uh, very large scale intervention in the economy, in this case to crash the economy, but also to engage in getting things, doing planning for emergency management purposes, uh, is uh, not symptomatic of uh, terminal crisis, is not symptomatic of terminal crisis for capitalism. This sort of stuff has been going on uh, for God knows how long, uh, certainly, um, I have been reading my my own my for my work. I've been reading stuff about uh, the uh, control of cattle plague in 1740s and 1750s England, largely by shutting down uh, the movement of cattle from one county to another and restricting uh, 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 and imposing uh, inspections and so on and so forth and for that matter the uh, it's very extensive measures in some ways rather more extensive measures than our present government has taken which were taken in the 1750s in response to an outbreak of bubonic plague in constantinople led to uh, the uk establishing uh, um, uh, quarantine zones which ships had to remain uh, for <coughs> substantial periods of time and quarantine hospitals at all the English ports and stuff like that so very substantial with a with with in order to do that uh, very extensive expropriation powers mm -hmm. so that's not novel mm -hmm. various authors have talked about uh, the possibility that this might be the end of capitalism in different sense of uh, something analogous to the fall of the Western Roman Empire. Um, Branko Mil Milanovic in the American journal Foreign Affairs wrote on March the 20th about this could be analogous to the fall of the Western Roman Empire. Indeed, um, uh, there is a um, book back from back from 2008 by a guy who'd lived through the fall of the Soviet Union along the lines of something is going to happen to hit the uh, level of interconnection of the United States and Western economies, and then it will be like the fall of the Soviet Union, only worse, uh, only worse, uh, because, because most everybody in the former Soviet Union had uh, state-owned accommodation to live in. They weren't, there weren't being enormous levels of evictions and so on. We aren't having enormous levels of evictions now, um, <clears throat> essentially because the UK government has prohibited, uh, it, it is one of the things which has done, is prohibited the commencement of any legal proceedings with a view to eviction. Um, <clears throat> but it's also done this furlough scheme which is designed to reduce the extent to which companies have laid people off and a whole load of other <clears throat> measures of one sort and another. If we imagine it actually as like the fall of the Western Roman Empire, Brankham Milanovic talks about uh, not a crisis like the Soviet, the fall of the Soviet Union, which certainly did lead to a substantial fall in Russian population, um, a very considerable um, impoverishment. 
massive impoverishment. Um, if, but if we imagine it as actually going to uh, the collapse of society, which Milanovic talks about, he is much, much too, um, he imagines it much, much too gentle. He imagines it uh, like, uh, the, as I say, the fall of the Western Roman Empire. But the fall of the Western Roman Empire doesn't involve uh, the, a drop in population of the scale which would be required for a transition from capitalism to natural economy. The UK population, just to give an example, would need to fall from 60 million to something other under uh, 2 million. And what roughly that would be like is imagined uh, probably rather optimistically by the uh, right-wing uh, science fiction writer S.M. Sterling in his book called Dies the Fire, which is a image of a world in which suddenly uh, malevolent aliens uh, interfere with uh, the functioning of electricity and internal combustion engines and steam engines in quite sophisticated ways which stop all tech from working and uh, the result is the cities all become wastelands filled with corpses and uh, small groups of survivors uh can live in the countryside we aren't there yeah so if we're not talking about we're not talking about that we're not talking about it ceasing to be capitalism because the state emergency management yeah? there isn't a viable presently a viable imaginary imaginable uh alternative all through the first half of the 20th century, there was a viable alternative, imaginable alternative, which began to be a viable altern or imaginable alternative in the second half of the 19th century. Uh, Marx called it in 1866, the, uh, <clears throat> Republican and beneficent system of the association of free and equal producers. Mm -hmm. Uh, cooperative production as an alternative to um, uh, uh, market-based production. And that was a, appeared as a, as, a, as a positable alternative because of the uh, democratic uh, norms, basically democratic norms of uh, cooperatives, trade unions, and of the uh, parties of the Second International. Um, it became less imaginable as a result of the rise of uh, the labor bureaucracy and especially as a result of which was already beginning in the last in the latter years of marx um, in england in the united states in germany uh, very quite visibly um, but uh, with ups and downs with ups and downs since we've got to the point where uh, the, the labor movement as a whole, as we can see in the um, uh, report on the anti-Semitism stuff and uh, the left, as we can see by the crises in the Socialist Workers' Party around Comrade Delta and the split of the Socialist Party of England and Wales from its supporters internationally around preserving the uh, jobs of the leaders of the Socialist Party of England and Wales. Um, total managerialization of the left yeah. very widespread managerialization but that managerialized the managerialized left is not actually offering anything different from or attractive as an alternative decision making mechanism to capitalism if anything it's offering something worse if we think about um the uh, famous economic inefficiencies of Stalinism, of the Russian Soviet regime. Yeah. Actually, the internal decision making processes of uh, the uh, labor and trade union movement considered are worse than, yeah, are more characterized by inability to get things done in paralysis as a result of the. Uh, um, bureaucracy and so on and so forth and then the plain consequence of all this stuff is that actually uh, that means that the question of replacing capitalism is not on the agenda 
we have to think about what not it's going to change capitalism but it's not going to terminate capitalism during this crisis secondly i said we're going to have a heavy mortality among the old and sick okay? uh, it's pretty clear from the numbers the the uh, that that this that this remains a disease which hits primarily the old and sick first second um it's the effect of lockdown was supposed to be to save health services from being overwhelmed by uh, a, a, a spike in in fact in, in severe infections as had happened in italy in fact um they clearly have saved the health service from being in, in, overwhelmed by a spike in severe infections but at the same time it's absolutely not clear that they've prevented effectively the spread of the uh, virus and indeed places who've gone off lockdown or begun to go off lockdown are having uh, revival in uh, spread of infections yeah. um, at the same time however lockdown uh, was an attractive policy and it was an attractive policy because it had been successful it's a, 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 a been a policy which had been adopted by cities to save themselves from the bubonic plague uh, and which had been successful in saving some American cities from the worst effects of the uh, influenza pandemic after the First World War. But in neither of these cases was there ever any attempt to lock down a whole country. And the reality is you lock down a whole country uh, and uh, quite soon there are going to be loopholes and um, because the locking down of single cities is enabled by the continued operation of production in normal way outside those cities and thereby uh, supply coming in from outside. Yeah. So that uh, first place there have to be loopholes, there are a whole load of people who are essential workers who have to go to work and who have been suffering. Um, from uh, increased rates of infection in this stuff. Uh, but in second place, actually, lockdown on this scale is unsustainable. It's not going to be kept going. And we can see this already, that the UK government is probably prematurely moving away from lockdown. But that governments will move prematurely away from lockdown is simply the result of the fact that the policy was always a, one which couldn't be sustained. Yeah. And the corollary of that, flip side of that, sorry, um, it's still, there's still no serious effort at uh, mass testing in this country. There's more in Germany, in South Korea, and other places. Test and tra tra testing, track and trace is, has, has, has not practically been adopted. Uh, the problem, the, there doesn't really seriously seem to be a uh, likely drug treatment is very unlikely that there would be a drug treatment given that we haven't got we've got for colds and flu we have essentially um, palliative measures these are diseases of the same general class not uh not down uh things like antibiotic things working that work against viruses um and secondly it's unclear whether there will actually be a successful um uh vaccine at all so we have to just reckon that um it's probable that there will be a high mortality among the old and the sick and that is going to have knock-on consequences knock-on economic consequences for the shape of society that the uh the age profile will shift life expectancy will fall uh the um long run quote pensions crisis arising from the fact that life expectancy was rising and retirement age then supposedly had to be forced up uh is uh, altered uh the um high dependency um problem affecting the nhs and the social care problem are all modified substantially um by uh, uh, uh by, by this development there is some uh, uh, some people i should say since i wrote that article which was my speculative article 
some people who are not cranks uh, have been speculating that it was in fact government policy to dump the elderly into old people's homes, nursing homes, where uh, no real serious gun policy in this country without uh, serious efforts to prevent the spread of the disease in the nursing homes and then thereby to conduct triage. Triage is the medical mechanism of choosing to treat when you have insufficient resources to treat everybody. That uh, There are some people who don't need to treat because they're going to recover on their own. Uh, there are some people whom treating is going to make a significant difference, and there are a third class of people who um, uh, 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 treatment is not terribly likely to make life matters much better, and they're then uh, abandoned. So triage um, on a society-wide scale, or as... Um, I mean, Dabashi puts it on uh, in an opinion piece on Al Jazeera, uh, mass non-voluntary euthanasia of the elderly um, on the basis that the, 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 the state has taken the view that those who work, that those who can work are to be preferred over those who are, quote, a burden on society, unquote. Um, I don't think quite that level of cynicism um, but actually is, is, is actually going on, but the triage judgment that there isn't enough resources to treat everybody and then actually are you going to uh, put a lot of resources into treating people who are towards the end of their lives anyhow, I think that judgment probably is there. Um, I've got a Piece from the British Medical Journal actually arguing for that uh, that 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 position, um, uh, and a piece from uh, the website The Conversation, similarly not exactly arguing for that position, but saying that is unavoidable. Um, third level, third point. Um, this is a crash. I should flag in the first place, yeah, it was very probable that there was going to be a crash this year anyhow, irrespective of the spread of this virus. Yeah. Um, Michael, we've been printing Michael Roberts' stuff in uh, the Weekly Worker. He's also been putting it out on the blog. But actually, the, 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 the point that... Um, Profit rate, industrial profitability has been falling. That um, the question of whether the car industry was solvent or the, the major car producers was solvent was already being posed in the in December 2019. Um, similarly, I looked at and we we'll come back to this the problem of the margins that the air. Uh, uh, air travel industry is running on uh, very tight margins. This problem of firms running on very tight margins and hesitation and doubts about uh, the um, uh, uh, health of the economy. Indeed, actually, all through 2019, we've had episodic attempts to push interest rates up again and then panic on the market and uh, down it comes and the interest rates held at very low levels uh, in order to try and uh, 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 keep the uh, stock markets and the financial services industry afloat. Um, so probably we were going to have a crash anyhow and then by deciding to do generalised lockdown uh, the government's across the world decided in a more or less coordinated way that they would crash the economy. Yeah. And that crash um, means has, has, has large scale implications. Crashes generally uh, mean uh, that there has to be redistribution. One of two things will happen. Either a haircut 
will be imposed on creditor interests. That is to say, uh, pensioners, savers and investors, and landlords. And their capital values of their assets and the rental incomes and interest incomes which they're entitled to claim on will be forced down. This is what happened in 1720 after in the stock South Sea bubble, the first sort of uh, recognizably modern uh, crash because the tulip bubble is probably a fan from 1630s, probably a fantasy. After the South Sea bubble, uh, government simply prohibited the recovery of more than uh, two thirds of debts contracted in the five years to the run up to the crash. Mm -hmm. By doing so, they created the conditions for uh, what the people in the press have been calling a V-shaped recovery. Because in essence, what happens in the bubble phase of uh, the business cycle is that uh, we have savers flock into um, industries which have uh, above average or projected believed to have above average rates of return because savers have to seek for above average rates of return or otherwise they'll get wind up getting below average rates of return the result is that there's overcapacity in those industries uh, the result of the overcapacity in those industries and the uh, 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 excessive um, capital investments in those industries is that there's a falling rate of profit in those industries. Then those are the lead sectors. The uh, investors now have to move into speculative operations as an alternative to investing in industrial production because the rate of profit in industrial production has fallen. So they move into speculative operations in land and in shares and in other financial operations of one sort or another. What goes along with that? Asset that is, is an asset bubble, both in land and in capital assets. And that asset bubble in land and capital assets carries with it a borrowing bubble attributable to the fact that anybody who wants to borrow to buy these capital assets has to pay more uh, in capital. The correction, what we've got is a massive overvaluation of capital assets and that massive overvaluation has to be corrected downwards it can't be corrected downwards without the losses being made to fall on uh, um, essentially savers and investors yeah. the idea that you can solve it by uh, printing more money is demonstrated has been demonstrated to be false by the actual failure to solve it by printing more money both in uh, 2001 through 2008 and in 2008 through the press. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, so to solve the problem requires that there should be a fall in capital asset, a really sharp fall in capital asset values and in credit to claims. But can the bloody governments decide to do that? Today, almost certainly not. Uh, if we think about it from the point of view of, um, first, that there's a whole load of ideological commitments, but secondly, these ideological commitments reflect the fact if you ask the question, who are the primary donors to capitalist political parties and the guys who uh, fund these operations, this is mainly uh, people in the, the financial sector. Secondly, um, and lenders to government as well. Secondly, in, over and above that, in the UK and also in the North European countries and in the United States, the countries are ex have been living on a flow of income from um, uh, 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 overseas. UK is the most, probably the most extreme example of that. Uh, I can't remember the exact figures, but we're sort of 8 billion plus in deficit in visible trade. That 8 billion deficit in visible trade um, is to a considerable extent made up of food that the UK doesn't produce anything like, remotely like uh, enough food uh, to feed the population of the UK. And that 
those imports are paid, the imports which are in deficit are paid for by uh, the supply of services and financial services in particular, but also legal services associated with financial services. So that, for example, uh, high fees are paid to uh, London solicitors for arranging um, uh, uh, tax dodging operations under which uh, Chinese billionaires uh, invest uh, in the British Virgin Islands and then British Virgin Island companies invest in mainland China, which is merely a means of concealing operations from the Chinese state. And uh, off, a lot of the offshore industry is a UK resource. So the world globally, to get out of the problems which are caused by the underlying economic problems, needs wind down of uh, the financial services sector, the offshore industry, um, and debts more generally. Uh, but the UK has long since given up a uh, major, in, uh, a lot of industrial production. You know, the UK has shifted out of industrial production and indeed even out of shipping and uh, moved very heavily into the financial services sector and to a lesser extent tourism we are uh, england britain is now a uh, modern equivalent of 18th century venice which was a financial center and tourist center um, so the, the consequence is actually britain has a big interest in not um, in not winding down the financial services. Britain as such has a big interest in not winding down the financial services sector, not. Uh, and then more generally, creditor nations have been opposed to the North European countries have refused to bail out the South European countries. In spite of the fact, of course, the South European countries are in debt because they were extending credit in order to buy the products of North European industry. Uh, and North European services. Uh, creditors have been kicking back against any suggestion of debt relief as a, an appropriate response to the coronavirus uh, crisis. Mm -hmm. In consequence, the likelihood is an L-shaped, at best a U-shaped, but U-shaped doesn't look right. It, 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 this, this once lockdown stops and uh, furlough arrangements wind down, um, and uh, given that the government isn't in fact cancelling debts on a large scale, isn't intervening to uh, force debt haircuts on the financial services sector, uh, the probable outcome is uh, going to look more like the crash of 1931 in Germany in terms of levels of unemployment than it is like 1929 in uh, Britain and the United States, that we'll probably be looking at between 10, 20, 30 percent unemployment, uh, Greek style conditions for that matter, um, uh, uh, not absolutely immediately and dragging on in the same way in which the uh, depression of the 1930s or the depression of the 1880s dragged on um, until uh, there was a movement, began to be a movement out of it. Um, my fourth point uh, is that uh, cheap air travel is likely to be off the agenda. Uh, as I said earlier, the uh, airlines have been running on really quite narrow margins and their business model has been essentially to pack them in, if anything, uh, uh, trying to fit more seats into aircraft, trying to get more throughput at airports, uh, very heavily heavy dependent on dependence on the speed of turnaround and footfall at airports and so on and so forth. Now, this business model is the immediate cause of the rapid and uncontrollable spread of this pandemic. This virus has spread out of Wuhan or wherever the hell it started, probably is Wuhan, but the latest thing is somebody took it into Wuhan from somewhere else. 
is has spread along the airline routes. However much the uh, American government and its uh, allies may wish to blame the Chinese for this, this is the the this 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 spread and hence actually all the losses it's, we've got uh, already 30 percent plus losses of uh, on on the stock markets and god knows what else is to come this is caused by uh, the business model of cheap flights it's very unlikely then that governments are going to allow the air air travel industry to go back to its uh, existing model we already have some uh, firms going bust so virgin uh, australia has gone bust i don't think there are a number of other smaller firms which are going bust quite a lot the, the airlines are mostly shut down and hoping for clearance but just assume that uh, the throughput of passengers through the airports is going to be slowed down somewhat and there's going to be some degree of social distancing on the actual airplanes yeah. that is going to put a lot of uh, low-cost uh, air carriers out of business in itself in addition the other side of this is that the um, uh, businesses have been i said this before but i'll repeat it uh, businesses will have been forced into using technology like this to hold business meetings international business meetings and um will have done so will, by doing so in fact have made massive savings relative to executive travel yeah. and they're going to come out of uh, the lockdown into adverse economic conditions and uh, very likely therefore that the uh, um, uh, 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 that they will continue to use the tech methods of holding meetings rather than sending people jetting off in business class so that a large chunk of the income stream of the uh, airlines from business class is also going to be hit yeah. um, what are the implications of that and the article i referred to uh, implications for the aviation air, air, aerospace manufacturing industry which has already taken a very severe hit mentioned by the financial times um, but it's also the case that the hotel and catering and tourism trade is going to be very badly hit i would guess also that higher education insofar as the higher education industry has in this country and in the United States and in Australia has relied very heavily on um, overseas students coming in uh, to uh, finance their operations that uh, that also will be uh, um, uh, very very heavily hit so a whole raft of these things the motor industry as I said uh, was doubtfully solvent at the time of the outbreak I thought at the at the time i wrote my article that that probably that the motor industry might likely get hit because of the apparent um increased severity of covid19 infections in places where there's high levels of uh, exhaust fume pollution uh, but if anything the government seems to be going in the opposite direction and saying don't use public transport go to work by car um i don't know what what was going on there because uh, if they actually moved everybody off public transport and say go to work by car you're going to have uh, endless traffic jams and uh, it'll be slower for people to get to work by car than it would be to walk um, however there it is um, wide implications foreign holidays are probably out this year um, they may well not come back again on anything like the scale which they've been the uh, practice since the 1970s. Um, my fifth point, uh, nationalism and dynamic towards war. We've got uh, the latest uh, little example of this is Trump threatens to default uh, the US treasuries belonging to China. Uh, but equally we've got um, 
a whole load of threats. It's not the only thing Trump is talking about, delinking from China. Um, but it's also the case that the United States is uh, engaged in a degree of military threat. The, the United States has a peculiar doctrinal position that, and has had since 1946, that China doesn't have territorial waters, that it is an immediate security interest of the United States that you should have unfettered access to the uh, Chinese coastline. Um, this, this is a US naval doctrine, remains US naval doctrine. Um, but, and the US has been pushing, having had a period of time when it was uh, using uh, an alliance with China as leverage against uh, the old Soviet Union, is now has been beginning to push back against China. Uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership was uh, conceived under George W. Bush, uh, and Obama talked of a pivot to pivot to Asia, which it, to a considerable extent meant uh, increasing. US military assets and developing uh, an encirclement, as far as possible, an encirclement of China. Uh, does this mean we're about to see, this is China's peaceful rise, and we're about to see uh, the United States uh, declining hegemon replaced by a rising hegemon? No. China is not a potential replacement hegemon for the United States. If there was a replacement hegemon for the United States, it would be uh, the European Union. But in fact, the European Union uh, ruled itself out of this possibility by the conduct of the Germans in the uh, Greek, in the Greek Eurozone, in the Eurozone crisis. So, because just by destroying essentially what they did, because by, by preferring the interests of uh, German and North European creditors over those of the uh, debtors who'd been screwed, um, and wrecking uh, the Greek economy and because very take putting very bad hits on other South European economies, the Germans destroyed the legitimacy of the European Union project and set free uh, the uh, Americans attack dog in London uh, to project uh, Brexit as the opening wedge for the destruction of the European Union, which is what the project of Brexit has all has has, has been all along. Um, in that sense, this is uh, and the, the United States pursuing a policy very much analogous to the policy of the British government uh, in the 19th century of resisting German unification. The British government did everything it could to prevent German unification until it became impossible to stop it, and of uh, supporting the Confederacy in the United States, which it did with everything short of actual military support. Uh, yeah. The United States government holds Europe in subordination through its divisions. China, on the other hand, is in a situation analogous to uh, the German Second Reich uh, in the period 1870 to 1914, rapidly industrializing, but rapidly industrializing with still a very large uh, peasant sector uh, and uh, nothing like, and indeed also actually a large, Stalinist heavy industry sector with little um, weight. China could not now, but could probably in 10 years time be in a position to take on the United States and uh, inflict damage on it, but not actually to overthrow it any more than Germany. Germany did not succeed in overthrowing uh, the British world hegemony in 1914-18. Yeah. Um, the, 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 there's two further steps involved in that, which is the Germanys, that the British had to depend on the United States in 1914-18 and in consequence wound up heavily indebted in the interwar period, and then that the British strategic position was brought down by the alliance between Germany and Japan in 1940-41. Um, but that's not, that's, that's a step further. The, the point simply is we are in a world in which uh, there is a radical step forward in movements into 
uh, nationalism and nationalist populism. It's absolutely been, it had begun well before this crisis, but this crisis takes it a quantum step further forward. And uh, we can expect to see more of that um, very much on the agenda. It's delusory, I make the point in the article, it's delusory to imagine that the left can ride that nationalist wave on the basis either of socialism in one country or of um, uh, uh, greenery. Because say, for example, we're going to have, a, we already have an increase in the use of this tech stuff. Uh, the tech implies a uh, fundamental role for rare earths. Yeah. Rare earths, the name tells us something about them. They're not, it's not like iron, which is all over the bleeding world. Yeah. Who is going to control the supply? Yeah. We aren't going to be digging up rare earths in Derbyshire. I, well, I mean, we may be for all I know, but uh, we, we aren't going to get we aren't going to be running this this the, the idea of a, a, a de delinking uh the international division of labor and international production there will be some of that it's likely that there will be serious efforts to reshore um parts of pharmaceuticals and parts of that sort of stuff which are medical equipment which have been offshore but nonetheless that's not going to mean an autarkic economy the plausibility of an autarkic economy existed for the Soviet Union precisely because of the size, the sheer scale of the former Tsarist Empire and the fact it was relatively little industrialized and had, had its own uh, uh, in, independent food supply. Um, so hence the nationalism doesn't lead to taking, leaving your own business and Take, letting other people get on with their own business. It leads to deeper involvement in geopolitical and com competition and antagonism. Um, my, I've gone on longer than I meant to with this stuff, but I'm going to go a little bit further. My, my first one was the third world, which uh, as I said, uh, uh, Yasmin drew my attention to. We already have the inf in information now that uh, the COVID virus, it hits the elderly and it hits the people who are already sick, but it also hits the poor. Yeah. It seems to hit the poor harder than the relatively well off, the more serious infections, more serious. That's not, at one level, it's not terribly surprising. The four horsemen of the apocalypse, um, war, uh, famine, uh, plague etc um the poverty and uh, uh, susceptibility to, to disease go a lot go hand in hand but then the corollary of that actually is that uh, uh the uh, quote developing world uh is going to be uh, very substantially more hard hit uh than the quote advanced world that's also that's exacerbated by the fact that the quote developing world has already been hard hit by IMF uh, uh, imposed uh, cuts uh, and uh, has less um, developed uh, commonly, not invariably, but has less developed public health systems. Um, that uh, the level of pollution in uh, cities, which is an indicator again, is going to be is worse. That the uh, 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 cr level of crowding and lack of uh, uh, space for living is worse. So all of these things indicate that we're going to have bloody hard hit uh, of the coronavirus lockdowns again much less resource available to um, uh, uh, allow lockdown to continue. Lockdown becomes less sustainable. It's already unsustainable in the advanced capitalist countries. It becomes less sustainable in the, quote, developing countries. Um, 
we get the information uh, in again yesterday's Financial Times dollar liquidity schemes leave some countries in the cold. The IMF and uh, US Federal Reserve uh, dollar liquidity schemes to help out countries which are having difficulties paying debts because of the crisis will not be available to Turkey, South Africa, Nigeria, Indonesia. They will only be available to countries which have quite good credit ratings, i.e. do more, etc, etc, more of the IMF um, uh, strike down and so on and so on. So we could expect uh, things to be, uh, th this crisis to have very much more severe effects in the third world than it has, which is already having very severe effects in the advanced capitalist countries. Um, we can also expect, I think, uh, and again, I owe this to you, I mean, that the uh, borders of fortress Europe and Mr. Trump's wall uh, are likely to collapse under the sheer pressure of people who, because the effect of uh, a, a, the effect of not cutting the third world debt, but instead insisting on uh, IMF reforms, is going to impoverish so many people that the pressure of people wanting to cross the border um, is going to be uh, incredibly acute, and the extent to which states are actually going to be able to maintain these borders and stop people crossing borders is uh, 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 very much open to question. Um, I said I would do two other things, but I'm actually going to do uh, only one of them, which, and that is, I've said all this is speculative, and it is speculative, but the context in which we're living is one in which the whole response to this crisis has been enormously dominated by news management. Um, it's very unclear whether we've got accurate figures about anything. The decisions for uh, the um, uh, uh, the decisions not to test on large scale in the UK, presumably it's partly that they really didn't have the resources to get going with testing and that they, but they, their ability to turn things around when they came under sufficient political pressure suggests that that isn't all of it. It's also, they don't want to know. They want to have uh, the ability to manipulate the figures, to move one sort and another, uh, to manage the news. Um, the uh, uh, Policy Exchange right-wing think tank um, had an interview um, some weeks back with a consultant who was a supporter of that sort of policies who said that actually he thought the uh, um, government had done a very good job with news management up to the point at which they imposed the lockdown because they'd carefully avoided creating panic uh, in the first place in order to give themselves time to do a little bit of preparation and then cre deliberately created panic at the second stage uh, in order to get people to agree to um, the very draconian uh, lockdown stuff. Uh, he was saying that this was not somebody from a sort of conspiracy theories. He was saying this was good news management. Mm -hmm. So the, then the consequence of that is how, what do we know? Actually, bloody little. So I've speculated at great length and too much length. Uh, but um, uh, uh, at that point, I'm going to end on the basis that we still know very little about uh, where we're going after uh, the end of lockdown. That's it. Okay, 